Let's talk about some general ideas following a procedure in terms of things that you should know about. Let's first talk about any kind of incisions I may do, whether it be an eyelid procedure, a facelift, a rhinoplasty, all those areas, how to clean the incision. You're going to go home with some peroxide, some Q-tips, all the things that you need to clean it with and dress it with. And if you run out, just come back to my office. We'll be happy to give you more. There's obviously no charge for that. And I just and if you don't, if you run out, you can call me. You can get at the store. These things are over the counter. Let's talk about an incision. Doesn't matter where it is. The way to clean it, even after a mole removal, whatever tiny thing. Basically, what you're going to do is take your your jar of peroxide. You're going to dip your Q-tip in there, and you're gently going to clean the incision. Just not abrasively rub it, but just gently clean it and, and let it almost roll over it. The key with this is peroxide does help clean the wound, but you don't want to let it sit there. So after you've cleaned the wound, you want to go ahead and take some bacitracin, the little packets I've given you, and dress it. So keep it very, very moist. The peroxide itself is very good for the first seven days. It is terrible after your seventh day. It can actually destroy your wound. So even though it's helping you tremendously in your first few days, it will start to hurt you after your seventh day. So remember, when the sutures come out, you're done with peroxide. But the reason peroxide is so helpful in the first week is that if there's any blood clots, if there's any little dirt that's there, anything else, that will be serve as a, a source of infection. So it's good to have a clean incision line. If you see little blood clots on your incision line, don't panic. It will come off after probably one or two days of cleaning. Don't sit there and aggressively try to rub those blood clots off because you can destroy my fine sutures. You want to just gently roll the little Q-tip over the area and let the blood clots so slowly fall off in the first one or two days. You don't want blood clots sitting there the whole week because that can impair the wound healing and also lead to a worse uh, uh, incision look after, as it heals. That's very, very important. The, as I said, you only want to clean your, your incision line twice a day with peroxide, no more. Fewer times is probably okay, but I would really recommend twice a day if you can. And right after the peroxide, put the bacitracin on there. With the bacitracin, you really want to use that twice a day. Um, and it, 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 at a minimum, and even more, if, if it looks like it's drying out, because you know the area may have lost a little bit of the, the what they call the stratum corneum, the outer protective layer, you want to keep it moist, moist, moist. It will heal much better if you can keep that moist. So if the question is how much bacitracin to put, just slather it on there. If you run out, I'll give you more. I want to keep it moist. So even if you're only, even though I'm only asking you to clean it twice a day with peroxide, I'm really asking you to clean it even more so with uh, with uh, bacitracin. So in other words, I'm still not clean it, but dress it more. So three, four, five times a day with bacitracin, it's okay. You don't have to, there isn't never too much. There's only too little bacitracin. Just keep it glistening. And if glistening means just twice a day, that's perfect. But if it means, you know, five, six times a day, that's okay too. Just keep the area moist. Now with bacitracin, there is a small incidence of an allergic reaction to the product. It would be a red, itchy, swollen look. That usually occurs about 48 to 72 hours after applying the bacitracin. It's a good idea before you apply it on the incision line to put it maybe on your skin or something uh, and watch it for 48 to 72 hours to make sure you're not allergic to the product. If you are allergic, stop the bacitracin. This will clear. I want you to call me and let me know. What you can do to start helping this control it is 1% hydrocortisone cream. But before you start applying 1% hydrocortisone cream, which is over the counter, which I can also provide you from my office, please call me. Just let me know what's going on so I can make the read. It's a very low percentage. It's less than 5% of people that can have this. But if you're unlucky and you get some swelling in that area from the bacitracin, please call me. If that occurs and you get an allergic dermatitis from that area, the hydrocortisone, some Benadryl, and, and Claritin can help you uh, get that under control, and I'll help you talk you through that over the phone. Um, and then we can switch over to Vaseline or something that doesn't have an antibiotic component to it. Vaseline is a, is a great emollient to keep it moist. It just doesn't have the back, antibacterial component, but you should be fine. I rarely see any kind of wound infections. But those are some ideas in terms of incision cleaning afterwards. And remember, I remind you, after the sutures come out, you must stop the bas, uh, excuse me, stop, yeah, actually stop both the peroxide and the bacitracin. The other thing is that I used to use vitamin E on the incisions. I stopped using that because some of the new theories is that vitamin E can actually improve pair the wound. So if you're wondering, what should I do after all the incisions are out? Uh, excuse me, after the sutures are out, nothing. Stop. Just don't do anything further. Remember also to stay away from sun exposure for the first six weeks as much as possible because that area can darken. That's a temporary uh, problem. And I can bleach it if, if we need to, but just stay out of the sun as much as possible. That's very, very important afterwards. And treat the incision lines gently. The incision line, if you pull on it hard, even after a few weeks, is still 
weaker than usual. So you want to be very, very gentle with it. And don't apply a lot of pressure to that area. Just be gentle when you're touching it. Um, anytime we have incisions, you don't want to shower for the first day. The next day, 24 hours after the, any kind of incision, you can shower. For the first 24 hours, I, don't, I want to keep that dry. Don't touch it. Don't shower. After 24 hours from the, from the end of the procedure, you can go ahead and shower. That should be fine. No tub baths. Don't soak incisions. But a nice, gentle, short shower, five minutes or so, without too hot, um, should be fine. The other thing is if I've done a lift, you may have a lo little loss in sensation for the first four to six weeks. So you want to be careful of getting too hot of water in that area because that can you may not be able to feel it. So just a gentle, tepid, warm water is, is important.